On the AP Calculus exam, it's very common for them to give you a table like this one and then ask you to evaluate a variety of expressions including derivatives and inverse functions. In this video, I will show you how to do that. For number five, I need to take the derivative of this composite function and then evaluate at x equals four. When you take the derivative of a composite function, you use the chain rule. So you start by taking the derivative of the outer function. So I'm gonna do f prime. And at first, you leave the inner function alone. So I have g of x. But then the chain rule says you multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So you multiply by g prime. But then we are supposed to evaluate at four. So I put four in for the x's to illustrate that I am evaluating at four. So I need to find g at four on the chart. So here is function g, and here is an x value of four. So this is g at four. I would also like to find g prime at four if I can. So here's four again, and here's g prime. So I'm gonna put these two values in where they go. So that gives us this. Now I would really like to find f prime at six on the chart. So here's f prime, but it only goes up to four. So it's a little unsatisfying, but this is going to have to be the final answer. For number six, we need to find the derivative of this product. So let's use the product rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the first function and leave the second function alone. And then I'm gonna put a plus and go through it again. The second time through, I'm gonna leave the first function alone. And I'm going to take the derivative of the second function. So this is just the product rule. So let's see, we need to evaluate this at x equals two. Let's see what we can find on the chart. We need f prime at two. So here is f prime and here is an x value of two. So that's this. What about g at two? Well, here's function g. And here's the x value of two, so that's this. All right, what about f at two? So here's function f, here's the x value of two, kabam, that's this. And what about g prime at two? So here's g prime, here's the x value of two, there it is. So I'm going to substitute each of these values where they go. So that gives us this expression. And if this were a free response question on the AP exam, we could just leave the answer like this. Or you could simplify and get 15, which is certainly what you would see as a multiple choice option. For number seven, we need to take the derivative of this. Again, we will use the chain rule, taking the derivative of the outer function and leaving the inner function alone but then multiplying by the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of two x is just two. But don't forget we are supposed to evaluate at x equals one. So I'm substituting an x value of one in for this x right here. So that's why I have two times one. So this is really g prime at two. Looking up at the chart, I see that g prime at two is one. So therefore I have one times two, which is just two. So that's the answer. For number eight, I'm going to take the derivative term by term. For the derivative of three times f of x, we've learned that you can just leave that constant out in the front and then go ahead and take the derivative of the function that's being multiplied. So the three stays there, but then I will have f prime at x. When I get to the next term, the derivative of a constant is zero, so we write nothing. But then we must evaluate at an x value of three. 
So this is going to become 3 times f prime at 3. So let's look up at the chart and try to find f prime at 3. Here's f prime, here's 3. So the value is negative 4. So that gives me 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12. Number 9. If g inverse is the inverse of function g, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of g inverse at x equals 2. Whenever they ask me to write an equation of a line, I love to use point-slope form, which looks like this. This tells me that all I have to do is find a point and the slope. Let's start by finding the point. The point will always be the point of tangency, and they told us we are to find the tangent at x equals 2. So we know that the x value is going to be 2. We just need to find the y value. But we have this equation for y right here. I'm going to write it backwards for a second. So we know that g inverse at x is equal to y. Since we already know that x is 2, we have g inverse at 2 is equal to y. Now we use the definition of inverse, and uh, we can just swap x and y, and that should give us the original function g. So in other words, g at y should now equal 2. Let's look up at the chart and see if we can find this y value we'll be asking ourselves the question, g at what is equal to 2? So here's g, and I see 2. So g at 1 is equal to 2. So we just saw that g at 1 is equal to 2. So that tells me that this y value must be 1. And that means that this y value is also 1 which tells us that the y value of the point of tangency is 1. So we found the point. Now we need to find the slope. The slope of this curve at this point. But we know that the slope of a curve at a point is the derivative. So we really need to find the derivative of this inverse function. If we find the derivative of the inverse at 2, that will be the slope that we need to write the equation of the tangent line. Here's the formula for finding the derivative of the inverse at a. However, rather than using this formula directly, I like to unpack it into three separate steps. Step 1 is to evaluate the inverse at a. Step 2 is to find the derivative at the value from step one. And then for the final step, we can find the derivative by simply taking the reciprocal of what we found in step two. Let me show you what I mean. Step one is to find the inverse at two. Remember, ultimately, we want the derivative of the inverse at two. But you start out by basically ignoring the derivative and just finding the inverse at two. And we actually already found that when we were finding the point 2 comma 1. So we already know that the inverse at 2 is 1. So we can move on to step 2. Step 2 is to find the derivative at the value that we found in step 1. So we're going to find the derivative at 1. I bet we will find this on that chart. So we want the derivative of g at 1. So that is going to be 5. So the derivative of g at 1 is 5. So moving on to step 3, we can go ahead and find the derivative of the inverse at 2 by simply taking the reciprocal of the value we found in step 2. So the, the derivative is 1 fifth. And that is the slope that we were looking for, so we can write the equation of the tangent line. So remember, we're using point-slope form, which goes like this, y minus y1 is equal to the slope 
times x minus x1. So using this point, we have y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. So this is the equation of the line tangent to g inverse at x equals 2. If you need more practice on finding the derivative of an inverse at a point, I made a whole video about that. So I will uh, put a link in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and click on that to get some more practice on that skill. Let's do one more of those with a small twist. If g inverse is the inverse of g, write an equation for the line normal to the graph of y equals g inverse at x equals 2. Wait a minute, that's the same question except they changed it to normal instead of just tangent. The key is that normal means perpendicular to the tangent line. So they are still asking us to write an equation of a line. So I still need to find a point and the slope, just like before. The point is going to be the same as problem number 9, because they are still saying uh, they want the normal line at x equals 2. So that still tells us that the uh, x-coordinate is 2. And the y-coordinate we got from this off of the chart, and it turned out to be 1. So we have the same point. Remember that the slope of the tangent at x equals 2 is 1 fifth. All right, it's right there. That's what we found on problem number 9. Recall from geometry class that the slope of a perpendicular line will be opposite and reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5, and opposite will make this negative 5. So now we have a point and the slope, so we can write the equation in point-slope form, which goes like this, y minus y1, so y minus 1, is equal to the slope times x minus x1, so x minus 2. So that's it, my friends. But um, look, that was just a long way of saying, if we already have the equation of the tangent line, the normal line at the same point is going to be the same equation, except the slope will be opposite and reciprocal. So all I really did was I changed the 1 fifth to a negative 5 for the normal line.